off again on another adventure. This was my first trip out of the country with my son, Luciano, who was just a few months shy of his second birthday. I've become so used to shooting with my DSLR that I wanted to break away and try something different. Having my son with me, I didn't want to come off as just another bocho tourist visiting the motherland, especially in a place that has always felt like a second home to me. I wanted to convey a more intimate and personal experience given the subject of this video, and so I decided to shoot everything on my iPhone. Like most Mexicans, we knew nothing of our family history or background, and what little we knew was completely speculative. Most people here don't care too much about where they came from. This is a rough landscape which meant you needed to survive. You needed to focus on what needed to get done, and who cares about anything else. I began investigating into my family history shortly after my son was born, when I began digging through old church documents. It was definitely a learning curve given the outdated Spanish language that was used for the official documentation. Breakthrough after breakthrough, I painstakingly put together a very interesting family tree. We returned to the place where my father was born, here in the town of Calvillo, within the state of Aguascalientes in Mexico. I wanted my son to experience life here and to maintain a close connection with our family, some of whom still remain here. We stayed in the house where my father was born, and I began to go through old family portraits in order to bring life to the names I only knew through the old documents. Though most of my relatives now live in the United States, my family has always made an effort to come and visit their family home here in Mexico. Growing up, we would try and visit at least once a year. Being one of 32 grandchildren, this place would oftentimes be filled with a lot of family. It was a great experience and we had lots of adventures with my family. In going through old photographs, I came across photos of my great-grandfather that not even my own father knew existed. It was eerie seeing my great-grandmother lying inside the open coffin in front of the mesquite tree, knowing that it was once located exactly where I was sleeping for the next two weeks. I also found photos of my grandmother's father, who had been killed fighting during the Cristero War when she was just a few years old. This was my grandfather's house, who had bought it off his brothers after they came to the United States. 
His brothers were the first in our family to come to the U.S. and eventually settle down in what is now the Carmel Valley in California in the 1930s. During World War II, there was a demand for a male workforce to help within the agricultural industry, and eventually my grandfather came up and traveled around the United States under the newly formed Bracero program. Slowly, my family began to make its way to California. However, my grandfather decided to move back to Mexico and continue working with some of my uncles on our ranch, growing guavas. <laughs> Para mi gente Con una pasión Con una pasión tan fuerte Ay, 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 ay Ahora sigo cantando Y sigo gozando Yo sigo cantando Y sigo gozando Almost all the families here maintain an average of 30 to 40 percent indigenous blood, though unfortunately many do not recognize this fact and believe themselves to be solely of a European origin. Though it's true many of the last names have Basque, Spanish, or even Italian or French origins, the fact is many over the years have become mixed into the general population. This area has always been culturally diverse, as with most of Mexico, but due to this valley being a little bit more isolated, has been able to see a steady exchange of families and cultural groups, which make it a lot more easier to trace. However, DNA tests revealed a more diverse indigenous heritage outside the limits of Aguascalientes, along with African and even South Indian roots. Some of the earliest historical family names of this region could be traced back to descendants of conquistadors, such as with the Lopez de Nava, who owned one of the largest haciendas in the area. The Lopez de Nava are descendants of conquistador Juan Lopez de Jimena, who fought alongside Cortes during the conquest of Mexico. Other last names, such as Najera, were a little bit more difficult to trace, as earliest records show that they were given to indigenous people who occupied this valley and eventually migrated to nearby Zacatecas. Lastly, there were a lot of African slaves who were originally brought to the main city and later became incorporated into the general population. Interestingly enough, most people with the last name Esqueda, which is quite common here, are descendants of Francisco and Ana Maria Esqueda, who migrated to Aguascalientes from Coria Caceres in Spain in the early 1600s. 
Francisco was presumably a wealthy Spaniard. However, in the earliest documents, Ana was labeled as a mulata, presumably having either African or Moor ancestry. My family has occupied this valley for over the last 200 years. Located four hours north of the Valley of Mexico, this area was once occupied by the Chichimeca and Cascan indigenous people. They were seen as barbaric by the Aztecs, and were never conquered nor incorporated into the main Aztec society of Tenochtitlan. <laughs> After the conquest, Spaniards began moving northwards throughout Mexico. However, this valley served as the perfect hideout for Chinchamecan warriors who began ambushing Spanish forces. After the Mixtone War of 1540 and the Chinchamecan War of 1550, which lasted 40 years, the realization came that the only reason for these brute ambushes was due to the fact that the Spaniards and other allies were attacking their villages and destroying their ways of life. Slowly, they went from being hostile indigenous tribes to being friends by simply changing policy and assisting them with provisions thus ending the attacks. Once things began to settle in this part of Mexico, families slowly began moving into the region. My last name, Gallegos, originates from Galicia in northern Spain. However, as far back as I could trace, the primary Gallegos family, of which I am descended, originated from the state of Guanajuato in Mexico to around the year 1700. It stated that they were already labeled as mestizos, or mixed indigenous and Spaniard, and lived in a small hacienda called La Quemada. That Gallegos family then became divided as one ancestor moved toward what was once the frontier in what was known as Nueva Galicia, and eventually settled near where our ranch is still located today. Many people with the last name Gallegos in Guanajuato and Aguascalientes are descended from this family. Likewise, there were other Gallegos ancestors from Spain that intermarried to the various families found in both my grandparents' lineages. Some of these individuals served critical roles during the exploration of the present-day United States and even South America. Going back through the family tree, I would occasionally be led down endless rabbit holes. This is when I subtly began to realize the true extent of my mixed heritage. In researching, I came to realize that Spain heavily regulated the migration of its citizens to New Spain, now known as Mexico. Most came from rich or royal families who could afford to move to the New World. However, many others were soldiers and conquistadors in search of fortune. In going back through my ancestry, something in particular caught my attention. Through three separate lineages, I was able to trace my ancestry back to a mysterious woman who had married a wealthy Basque nobleman who had just migrated from Spain in the late 1500s. Her last name was written in as Gabay y Moctezuma and people linked her directly to Moctezuma himself, the last emperor of the Aztecs. I thought that perhaps my research was flawed, seeing as there were only a few officially recognized Moctezuma lineages that exist in Mexico and in Spain.
This one lineage in particular has been at the forefront of much academic debate, as no official records exist in Mexico regarding Moctezuma's granddaughter, Petronilia de Moctezuma, who later married Spanish-born Martín Gabay de Navarro, shortly after the conquest. The reason for her absence within official documents was clear to researchers. There was much legal fightings regarding land and property holdings within the Moctezuma family that they left her out of all the inheritance. She eventually married and settled in the tiny region of Aguascalientes, where her children married into some of the most wealthy and royal families at the time. By the end of the two weeks, I came away with a profound appreciation for my family history. Within this valley of willows, my ancestors have always longed to create a better life for themselves and their children. Being the byproduct of incredibly diverse cultures, this is the land where two worlds collided. And I couldn't be prouder of who I am. Generation after generation, we dreamed of a better life. But now, as most of my family has relocated up north, we have begun to lose touch with our ancestral roots. I can only hope to further pass on an appreciation of our homeland to my son and to never lose that connection. Only time will tell.